In this lesson, we begin scalar line integrals. Here's how I like to imagine what a scalar line integral can compute. Suppose we have a scalar valued function of two variables, and for the illustration, I'm going to assume it's non-negative, defined over some domain in R2. So z is a function of x and y. Next, suppose I have some curve in my domain, the domain for the function, for which I have a parametrization r of t for t values going from a to b. How could we find the area above the curve and under f? Here's what I mean by that question. Suppose this curvy sheet of paper I have graphed here is the graph of z equals f of x and y. So assuming we have a nice continuous function, this graph is a surface in R3. Next, suppose this red curve I've graphed in what looks like the xy plane inside of R3 is the curve C. And let's suppose it's going from this point R of A to this point R of B. If I compute the composition f of r of t, that would give me the subset of my graph of z equals f of x and y pictured by this black curve here. So every point on that curve has the form x comma y comma f of x and y, where the x and y coordinates come from the curve. The area over the curve and under the graph of this function is this area I've pictured over here on the right. This area is one thing that we can compute with a scalar line integral, so I might refer to it as a curtain area or something like that. In the past, we've used integration to compute area under the curve. Here it's a similar notion, but our area can be kind of wavy. Speaking of similar notion though, how would we approach computing this area for the first time? What we would wanna do is think of this area as approximated by a bunch of rectangles, where the height of this rectangle is some function value for the composition f of r. And the width of the base is approximately a little piece of arc length, which we could approximate with the arc length function s of t. So this is like delta s, a little piece of arc length. Okay, now that we have a picture of what this question is asking, we can finish our derivation. This curtain area that we're looking for we could approximate by adding up some rectangular areas, where each of our height is going to look like f evaluated at some point along the parametric curve. And then the base is like a little piece of arc length. If this sum converges as we let n go to infinity, then we represent this as the integral over the curve c parametrized by r, f ds. So this is the form of a scalar line integral. We integrate a function over a curve c with respect to arc length, but that's not usually how we would set up and solve the integral in practice. So what we do instead is we use the relationship between the arc length function and the speed, namely ds dt equals the speed, to replace delta si with the speed times a change in time. So if I go back to the Riemann sum and I replace delta si with this new expression, we get this. Which leads to the integral expression for scalar line integrals that we typically use in practice to compute these. The domain for t goes from a to b, and then what we're integrating is f of r of t times the speed, the length of r prime of t. And then we integrate that with respect to t. So these are the two integrals that we associate with scalar line integrals. This one is really based on the definition. This is what a scalar line integral is. It's integrating f over a curve with respect to arc length. The second form is how we actually compute these in practice. For our curve c, we have a parametrization r of t. We evaluate the composition f of r of t, multiply it by the speed, and integrate that from a to b with respect to t. Therefore, the scalar line integral of f along c with respect to arc length has this general form, which in practice we compute as the integral from a to b of f of r of t times the speed dt. 
For the rest of this lecture, we're going to do three examples. Okay, let's start with this first example. We want to integrate f of x and y equals the square root of 1 plus 4y over the curve in the xy plane given to us as r of t equals t comma t squared for t values going from 0 to 2. I'm going to set up the same four steps for each of these problems, and the first one is to come up with the parametrization if you don't already have it. In this case, we do. So let me just identify that the parametrization is r of t equals t, t squared for t values going from 0 to 2. It's possible for us to have a description of the curve and to need to find r of t is the first step. But in this case, we can go on to the second step, which is to compute the pullback f of r of t. That's that composition evaluating f on the parametrization. So that means we're going to evaluate f on t comma t squared. So that's going to be the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. That's the first term in our integrand. Let's move on to the next term. So we'll compute r prime, and we'll compute the speed, the length of the velocity vector. So computing the speed means computing the length of the vector 1 to t. That's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus quantity 2 t squared, so we get the square root of 1 plus 4 t squared. Of course, steps 2 and 3 don't always give you the exact same expressions. In this problem, they happen too. My fourth step is just to set up the integral and solve it, if possible, to do by hand. So the integral of f along c with respect to arc length is the integral from the lower bound of t to the upper bound of t, f of r of t, which is what we computed in step 2, so that's the square root of 1 plus 4t squared, times the speed, which is what we computed in step 3, so that's also the square root of 1 plus 4t squared dt. Okay, now we just simplify this. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 plus 4t squared dt. Once you've set this up, it's just a single integral. So we're just going to do one round of anti-differentiation. For this example, that's going to be t plus 4 thirds t cubed, plug in 2, subtract off plugging in 0. So that's 2 plus 4 thirds times 8, or if you like, that's 38 thirds. This was an example of doing a line integral of a function of two variables on a plane curve. But our formula generalizes to other dimensions, so we can also integrate functions of three variables on space curves. In this example, we want to compute the line integral with respect to arc length of the function f of x, y, and z equals z. So this is a function of three variables along the helix r of t equals cosine pi t sine pi t 8t from the point negative 108 to the point 1016. So the first step is either to find or identify the parametrization. Here the parametrization r of t is given to us, but we don't have the bounds on t explicitly, rather we have two points. So we just need to identify what t values would send us to the points negative 108 and 1016. Probably the easiest one to check is the z coordinate. We're at 8 when t equals 1, and we're at 16 when t equals 2. Next we compute the composition f of r of t. So f of x, y, and z equals z. So that means that what f does is it just extracts the third input. So in this case, f of r of t would be 8t. Next, we compute the speed. So that's the length of the velocity vector r prime. So that's going to be the length of negative pi sine pi t, pi cosine pi t, 8. The first component squared plus the second component squared is going to give us pi squared. So overall, this is going to be the square root of pi squared plus 64. Okay, so now we're ready to set up and solve the integral. This line integral we will compute by integrating from 1 to 2, 8t times the square root of pi squared plus 64 with respect to t. The square root of pi squared plus 64 is just a constant, so let's see, 8t is going to leave us with 4t squared, so we anti-differentiate this and we get 
the square root of pi squared plus 64 times 4t squared evaluated at 2 subtract off evaluating at 1. So that's going to be 16 minus 4, so overall it's 12 times the square root of pi squared plus 64. Let's finish with one more example. Okay, for our last example, we would like to evaluate the line integral of xy plus 4z over c, the line segment from the point 2, negative 1, 3 to the point 4, 1, 2. In this example, we don't have a parametrization. We have a description of the curve. So we ourselves need to come up with the parametrization r of t and the bounds on t. Luckily, c is a line segment, and we have an explicit way to parametrize a line segment. So our parametrization is going to be r of t is 1 minus t times the position vector for the point where we start, plus t times the position vector for the point where we end. So in our first coordinate, we'll have 2 minus 2t two plus 4t, so 2 plus 2t. Two in our second coordinate, we'll have t minus 1 plus t, so 2t minus 1. And then for the z component, we'll have 3 minus 3t plus 2t, so 3 minus t. With this way of setting up a line segment, t goes from 0 to 1. Our next step is to evaluate f of r of t. So we need x times y plus 4 times z. So the first two components multiplied together are going to be 2 plus 2t times 2t minus 1. I'm going to write that as 2t plus 2 times 2t minus 1, plus 4 times the third component. So let's see, that's going to be 4t squared minus 2t plus 4t is plus 2t minus 2 plus 12 minus 4t. Okay, so that leaves us with 4t squared minus 2t plus 10. Okay, next we need the speed. So that's going to be the length of the vector 2, 2, negative 1. So inside the square root, we would have 4 plus 4 plus 1, so that's square root of 9, which is 3. Okay, now we can actually evaluate this integral. We will integrate from 0 to 1. So I'll write 12t squared minus 6t plus 30. Okay, so anti-differentiate this, and we're going to get 4t cubed minus 3t squared plus 30t. Evaluate it at 1, subtract off evaluating at 0. Okay, so overall that's 4 minus 3 plus 30, so 31. That's our last example for this lesson. I hope you see once you start doing these that they're not so bad. You want to come up with your parametrization, plug it into your function, compute the speed, and then integrate. Thank you for your attention.